now that I slightly modified my spreadsheet and saved it, uh, I'll click next. This is basically the step where you upload your file. Uh, if you want to know what will be transferred from the spreadsheet, we recommend uh, we, we let you know what it is. So these are things like name, address, birth date, and hire date. Uh, we could also bring in the pay rates, the pay schedule, whether you pay them weekly or bi-weekly or monthly, as well as some payroll policies. What type of file can you upload? Uh, we can make sense of XLSX, that is Microsoft Excel files, or CSV files. Uh, if you have, if you use Google Sheets for your spreadsheets, we recommend you download it as XLSX so that we can absorb it. If you have other file types like images or PDFs, uh, this is not the right flow for it. You can view this example again. You can download the file again. If this template is useful for you, uh, you can fill this in and upload as well. If you don't like the amount of work that is needed using the spreadsheet, you can always add your team manually using the button right button. But assuming the spreadsheet upload is still useful for you, let me uh, pull it up from the file that I just saved. So you can see that QuickBooks has already mapped some of these headers for you. If you used a file as a template and filled in some data uh, and the headers exactly match what we provided, then we already do the mapping. But if you are uploading your own spreadsheet with its own set of headers, there's no problem, you just need to map it. Uh, I had intentionally changed a few headers to show what I mean. Uh, so I had made first name into name one, and uh, you could have that header name as anything. You could call it XYZ or header one or anything. Uh, but as long as you recognize that that column has first name, you can name it first name. Uh, if there's a different name for last name, you can name that as well. But let's say you have all your names in one cell, uh, in one column, and you haven't divided it as first name and last name. In that case, I recommend you deselect all of these names, and then you select name one against full name. So automatically first name, middle name, last name, which is the other way you could have stored names, disappears. So in our case, our spreadsheet had one column for the first name and another column for the second name. So I will deselect this and I'll select name one against first name, name two against last name. Just to verify what I mean, the way I had organized the spreadsheet, all my first names were in name one, all my last names were in name two. Uh, there are a few more mappings here that are left. So my home city is called city. My state name is state and my zip is zip. I just help QuickBooks payroll understand what these are. For some reason, it's not able to pick up. Uh, this feature would get better with time and hopefully we will be able to recognize your spreadsheets automatically. Uh, let's say there is, oh, I had intentionally saved birthday as B day, uh, just so that to demonstrate how the mapping works. Now let's say you map two different fields to the same column. I map both birthday, uh, birthday in the spreadsheet as birthday, as well as hire day. Payroll wants you that, hey, we don't know what this column is if you map the same column to two fields. So once you uh, help us resolve that, this warning goes away. So this is how the mapping is done. If you don't have a few columns, that is all right. We don't expect you to map all of these. 
the more of these fields that you have, the less work you have down this uh, down this workflow. If you have just the first name and last name, that's enough for us too. If you have all of this information, that is great. So let's go ahead. So now that I've done the mapping, I'll click next. Okay. 